Hello, welcome to another episode of Tronics in 10. My name is Brian, and in this episode, with the help of an oscilloscope, we're going to take a look at the signals stage by stage in the three transistor AM radio receiver that we just built. This will help you to understand how each stage functions and how we get audio out of the speakers from an invisible radio wave in the air. So stick around. You're looking at one of my oscilloscopes that I have on my test bench. Uh, an oscilloscope is a piece of electronic test equipment that is used to graphically show a electronic signal in a circuit. Uh, it's invaluable to have in designing and repairing electronic circuits and it displays uh, an electrical signal in a amplitude versus time format. And I'm going to zoom in on the screen so I have some numbers to show you. Uh, you will notice when I turn the volume up and uh, bring out the music that's playing. You'll notice that the amplitude is bouncing up and down in step with the music and hence it's called amplitude modulation or AM. Uh, the music program material from the studio changes the amplitude of the radio carrier wave and then the carrier wave that we're looking at is the raw signal pulled right out of the air by our tuner. We have the scope probe connected to the output of the buffer stage and if our eyes could see radio waves in the air this particular one that we have selected with our tuner would look something like this now the numbers on the screen here uh, on the left it shows two millivolts that indicates that the oscilloscope uh, vertical sensitivity control is adjusted to show two millivolts of signal per square each one of these squares is one centimeter by one centimeter. Now we are using uh, a times 10 scope probe. I have a times 10 scope probe which helps to isolate the circuit from the scope probe so that it does not interfere with the operation of the circuit. And because I have it uh, set for times 10, this is actually 20 millivolts, not uh, 2 millivolts uh, per square. And as you can see, we have uh, a very weak uh, signal, uh, just slightly over 20 millivolts. Now, the other number here on the right is 500 nanoseconds. And as I mentioned, uh, the oscilloscope displays the signal in amplitude versus time. Well, every one of these squares is uh, a snapshot in time of uh, 500 nanoseconds per square. And you have uh, 10 squares all the way across. And so, uh, instead of 500 nanoseconds per square, the entire screen is showing a snapshot of 5,000 uh, nanoseconds and uh, typically the higher the frequency that you're looking at uh, with the oscilloscope the higher you have to have your time base turned up now if I turn the time base to a lower uh, setting a lower frequency now I can see the audio component of, of the uh, radio carrier and it's fuzzy looking because it's mixed in uh, with the radio carrier uh, but this is uh, at a slower audio rate and it's kind of flashing uh, on the screen it's now at two milliseconds uh, per per square or uh, 20 milliseconds across the entire screen it's just a snapshot in time of, of the signal that we're looking at now what I'm going to do 
next is I'm going to hook uh, the scope probe into a different part of the circuit. Okay, we're zoomed in on the first two stages of our receiver and the waveform that you were looking at uh, a few moments ago on the oscilloscope that was uh, how it looks in the output of the buffer stage uh, which isolates uh, the circuit here in our receiver from that of the tuner where we tune in our, our station and the signal coming out of the buffer uh, is very weak it's just over 20 millivolts so now uh, the signal by this coupling capacitor is fed into the base lead of our RF amplifier which is an MPN 2N 3904 uh, transistor it's, uh, just a general purpose transistor and uh, the, the coupling uh, capacitor I should mention uh, blocks the DC operating voltage that this stage runs at from the DC operating voltage that is set uh, that this stage runs at however it allows the AC signal, uh, the radio carrier, and, and audio that it contains, it allows that to pass through. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hook our scope to the collector lead of the RF amplifier transistor and I want to show you how much more stronger it is and we will now take a look at the scope and you can see that it's uh, greatly amplified. Well now you can see that the signal is literally off the charts. It, it occupies the entire screen and beyond so we have to turn down the sensitivity control, uh, the vertical sensitivity of our oscilloscope we were at uh, 2 millivolts or times 10 from the uh, times 10 scope probe and now we're going to turn it down so we can get uh, the signal back uh, on the screen uh, now uh, we're at a uh, setting of 20 millivolts on the scope uh, with the scope probe set at times 10 uh, it's actually uh, 200 millivolts uh, per square so we have uh, over 600 millivolts of uh, signal now uh, thanks to our RF amplifier. Well in the process of moving the scope probe I bumped the tuner dial so I had to tune that in and uh, peek my signal out and now it's uh, even stronger yet. And you can still see uh, the waveform move along with the music and if I turn my time base up to a higher frequency level you can see the raw carrier uh, moving up and down along with the music. Now uh, after retuning the uh, tuning capacitor that I bumped um, we're now at 50 millivolts uh, per division uh, times 10 with a scope probe set for the uh, times 10 setting so it's actually uh, 500 millivolts per square so we have a uh, 500 a thousand about uh, uh, 1500 millivolts uh, which uh, is the same uh, as 1.5 volts so we went from 20 millivolts, just over 20 millivolts, to 1.5 volts or 1500 millivolts. So uh, that's a very substantial gain in our RF amplifier. But now that we've done that, we have more than enough signal to drive our detector diode. So now we'll show you what that signal looks like on the output of our diode which is where we start removing the radio carrier and extracting the audio component. Okay, I now have the scope probe connected to the output of the detector diode. I initially had it here when you last saw the waveform on the oscilloscope. Now I'm going to clip it to the output 
of the detector diode and this is what it looks like now the output of the diode it only shows the top half of the signal and this is because the diode conducts current in one direction only and this is where we start the process of removing the carrier and uh, extracting the audio information now if I turn the time base from 500 nanoseconds uh, and slow it down to uh, 2 milliseconds uh, we can see the audio component of the signal uh, the top half of it and it's still uh, very fuzzy it still has a lot of artifacts uh, from the radio carrier which is at a much higher frequency so now we're going to look at the signal on the output of our low pass filter okay the scope probe was connected to the output of the detector diode and now I'm going to move it over to the output of the low pass filter and the low pass filter as name implies uh, allows the lower frequency audio signal to pass through and it grounds out or uh, eliminates uh, the higher frequency radio carrier so now we'll see what that looks like on the scope okay this is what our signal looks like now coming out of the low pass filter uh, we have essentially pure audio we no longer have the radio carrier uh, we have no need for it now because the audio content has been delivered to our radio receiver and we've amplified it so that we could process it further uh, remove the RF carrier from the radio station's transmitter uh, yielding uh, the audio component as it's being sent out of the studio <clears throat> now um, we're at uh, 10 millivolts uh, 100 millivolts per division uh, by way of our times 10 probe and we have an audio signal that's uh, about 150 millivolts peak to peak that's not very strong uh, definitely not strong enough to drive our computer speakers that requires uh, right around uh, one volt peak to peak to drive most computer speakers to full volume so the next waveform I'm going to show you is uh, the output of the audio amplifier which is the last stage of our receiver so we will take a look at that next okay we had our scope probe connected to the output of our low pass filter and we have it going through a coupling capacitor uh, this blocks the DC operating voltage of our audio output transistor uh, from that of the low pass filter and the audio output uh, amplifier is also a MPN 2N3904 uh, style um, MPN transistor and I'm going to uh, place the clip lead on the collector the collector lead of the transistor which is the output of the uh, audio amplifier and it's also a uh, one leg of the coupling capacitor where the green alligator clip connects to that passes audio onto our computer speaker so now we will see okay this is our signal on the output of the audio amplifier transistor and as you can see it is uh, much much stronger than it was before so I'm going to turn the vertical sensitivity control down and now we're at uh, 50 millivolts or 500 millivolts per division instead of 100 millivolts per division and uh, we have a peak-to-peak -peak signal of uh, real close to one volt uh, so we got about uh, 10 times not quite 10 times uh, gain out of our audio amplifier and this is uh, the audio that is then sent on to our computer speakers. So 
So there you have it, uh, the signal tracing on our 3 transistor BC-1 radio. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Tronics in 10. My name is Brian and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.